things here. In the man in our passage today, God was trying to touch him, trying to reach him, but he didn't want God to uh, touch him or reach him. But I hope that today we do. And this song talks about that. Uh, he touched me. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same He touched me Oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, since He cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise Him. I'll shout it until eternity rolls. He touched me. touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me Well, my hope is for today, today, for you and for me, is that God would touch us, and that we would allow him to do that. And I've been praying that God would hold you in your pews uh, the whole service through uh, to let him touch you, to let him touch your soul. We as pastors, sometimes uh, we study things and we look it over and, Lord, this is really difficult. I don't like this. This is hard to study, it's hard to preach, and in no doubt it's hard to hear, to go back into the book of Genesis and see some of the things that uh, take place. We've been in the book of Genesis since uh, January 2021, off and on, and we've arrived all the way to uh, chapter 4 uh, so far. And in today's passage, we're going to see uh, some of the effects of what Cain did from our last message back in April, where we uh, discovered the first murder. And uh, studying things like this is not exactly easy. And uh, I would uh, bring it to you today because it's good uh, for us to hear God's word. It's, it's a bad deal as a pastor to, I'm not going to preach on that, Lord, I don't want to do that. So we preach the whole counsel of God. So the first thing that we're going to look at today here is a missing brother, a missing brother. Get those two points correct or color your horses or whatever and uh, you'll have a prize in the back there, okay, to uh, uh, carry you the rest of the way home. A missing brother. A couple weeks ago, uh, I came across something as I was watching a little internet news there. I came across a human being holding a sign the sign said, abortion saves lives. And I was puzzled by that for a little bit. And so I thought of that uh, phrase there. Where, is it, where does such an evil thought come from? Where does such a lie come from? And I thought, well, it comes right back here. It comes right back from the book of Genesis. 
And we're going to see that in today. Where does such thinking come from? How can we get so distorted, so blinded? Well, God told Adam and Eve in the garden. He said to Adam, Of all the trees you may freely eat, but that one over there, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, in the day that you eat that, of that one, you will surely die. And when we see things like that, that's part of our deadness. We don't see things like that anymore. We don't even recognize things like that. Or we deny them. And so that's what we're going to see in our passage for today. This missing brother. So we've already covered uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Cain has killed his brother. He didn't like the way God accepted Abel's uh, offering. Abel offered his offering from the first of his flock. Cain was, uh, whatever. Okay. Abel offered his out of a heart of faith. Cain did not. And so the Lord regarded um, Abel's with favor. Cain's he did not. And so, Cain, not being able to kill God, took it out on his brother. Okay? And we're going to notice that in our passage for today. And so oftentimes, when you see this in our world today, since we can't kill God, we'll often take it out on other human beings. Take that then, God. And that's where this all stems from, is back in Genesis chapter 3 and 4. Cain has killed his brother now, and then God comes to Cain, the murderer, and he says to Cain, where is your brother? Is it possible that the Lord didn't know where Abel was? You know, the Lord was walking through the, uh, upon the earth there, and well, I can't find Abel anywhere. I wonder where he went. He doesn't know where he went. The answer is no. The Lord knows Everything. There is nothing that can be hidden from him. And so we've already seen uh, God ask this kind of a question to who? Adam. After Adam rebelled against God, he said to Adam, where are you? And so what God is doing, he's looking for man to respond back in confession and repentance and faith. That's the invitation to, uh, from God. Where is your brother? Okay. It's not that Jesus didn't know where he was, but he's looking for Cain to come on back. That's the invitation to come on back. Okay. So where is your brother? Now, Cain had killed his brother. I'll go back to verse 8. I think it was verse 8 there. Okay. So notice in verse 8, where is it that Cain killed his brother? What's the location? It starts with the letter F. In the field. Okay. So you want to keep in mind that Abel was a keeper of the flocks, the pasture land. Okay? Cain was a tiller of the soil, tiller of the ground. He, uh, he uh, worked in the soil. Okay? He had fields then. Okay? So we know this is premeditated murder. We know that he's covering his evil intent with niceness. Brother Abel, I'd like to show you my nice field. Let's go look at my nice field. It's a bumper crop this year. I'd like to show it to you. <laughs> Bang! Killed him on the spot. Okay. What you're looking at is you're looking at the utter depravity of man. This, this is the awfulness of sin that we cover it up with something nice. Let's go for a walk, my brother. I'll show you my nice field. And then he kills him out, out there. That is the hardness of heart. That is what our hearts, the old nature, looks like. It's not pretty. It's not pretty to study it, it's not pretty to preach it, and it's not pretty to hear it. But that's what the old nature looks like, okay? So, out in the field here then, Cain has killed his brother. Where is your brother? Where is Abel your brother? I missed that part. Where is Abel your brother? Guess what Cain says? What does verse 9 say there? Beats me. I don't know where he is. I couldn't tell you. I don't know where he is. Does Cain know where Abel is? Of course he does. Absolutely. Cain could walk right over here, right to the spot, and oh, he's right in there. 
That's where I put them. Okay. Which is a what? Starts with the letter L. A lie. Okay. So Cain, a human being made in the image of God, now tainted by sin, who has died just like Adam and Eve, now is lying to God. Okay. Again, you're getting a little picture, or maybe I'll say a big picture, you're getting a big picture of the depravity of man. God asks us a question. Where is Abel, your brother? Beats me. I don't know. Kind of like those three monkeys on the little uh, thing you put on your desk. Uh, monkey see nothing, monkey hear nothing, and monkey say nothing. Beats me? I don't know. Okay. And so man reverts to lying. Okay. I don't know. And then it gets even worse. Cain questions God. He says to God, am I my brother's keeper? God has come to him and said, where is your Abel, your brother? I don't know. Even though he just got done killing him. You know, the, the time frame, I don't know the exact time frame, but it was just not that long ago. I don't know where he is. Am I my, am I my brother's keeper? Cain is telling God, none of your business, God. Mind your own business, God. What I do with my brother is my business. If I want to kill him, I can kill him. Go back to heaven where you belong. Leave me alone. And God is saying to Cain and to all human beings, it is my responsibility. It is my business. But you see the depravity of man. We tell God, Mind your own business, God. If I want to kill people, what difference is that to you, God? It's none of your business, God. We lie about the killing of human life, and we say, God, you have no business telling me what to do. Again, that's the depravity of man. So when you see that in our world today, this is where it stems from. We lie about the taking of human life. And we say to God, you've got no say in it. But God is saying, oh, yes, I do. I am the one who made human life. I took man from the dust of the earth, and I breathed into him the breath of life. He is made in the image of God. He put the man back to sleep, took out a rib, and built a woman, brought the woman to the man, the first marriage. Cain and Abel were the first boys born. Cain was the older brother. And God says, it is my business, Cain. But you see the depravity of man Man, we, you, you don't have any business in this, God. You don't have any right questioning me. But God says, oh, yes, I do. Okay? He holds man accountable, responsible. Something in our time frame, and Americans don't like to hear that, but we must hear it. And we are accountable. Okay? Notice also, Cain uses this word, am I my brother's keeper? Another slap in the face of God. What had... Abel been doing as part of his calling on earth? What was his vocation of work? Abel was a what? Keeper of the flocks. Did you catch that? Am I my brother's keeper? I can't keep track of my brother. My brother kept track of the sheep. Okay. And so what God is telling us today as his people, we are our brother's keeper. Okay. As an older brother, I am to keep my, I am a keeper of my younger siblings. Okay? As, as a follower of Christ, we are our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper. Okay? We are to watch out for them, okay? not destroy them. And that's what God has called us to as his people. Okay? So we notice that in our passage here. Cain just said, no, I'm not going to deal with this. Notice in verse 10, he said, what have you done? Okay. The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. God knows what's going on. What have you done? Again, another um, call for uh, Cain to come in repentance and faith and confession. And then God says, 
there's some, tes- there's some evidence here. There's some testimony against you. Okay? Because Abel offered up a, a, an offering pleasing to God through faith in God, okay? Abel all of a sudden showed up in heaven by faith in God. Okay? So now heaven says, uh, something went wrong down there. Okay? Also the ground. The ground is testifying against Cain. His blood is crying out. Okay? Abel's blood is crying out from the earth. Okay? Cain couldn't hear that. But guess who did? God. That should really encourage our hearts. That for those who are murdered, human beings can't hear them. The murderer can't hear them. But God can. Isn't that good news? So God hears this blood crying out, the blood of Abel is crying out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed from the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. The blood is, or the, the ground, as it received Abel's blood, says something to this effect saying, this isn't right. I should be receiving rain, not blood. See, even the blood is a a testimony against Cain. Notice what happens next here. When you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. So God says to Cain, the ground isn't going to yield like it used to anymore because of what you've done. Because you're... The ground has received your brother's blood from murder. And you're going to be a vagrant. You're going to be a beggar. You're going to be a wanderer. You're going to be wandering all over uh, the earth from place to place. And uh, you will never be able to settle down just constantly on the go. If you're looking for food, you'll have to go to the dumpster at Pizza Ranch in the dark and help yourself to the chicken bones and hope nobody sees you. As far as living in a place, you'll never live in a place. You'll always be on the move. Okay? That's what God has declared to uh, Cain now. Now in that, you can also see God's grace. You can also see God's mercy and his long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and faith, come to the knowledge and come to Christ come back to him. Okay? God could have zzz. Cain, you're done for. Today is your last day. In fact, today is your last second. He could have done that. You know, Leviticus tells us that if you kill a person, life for life, blood for, for blood. Okay? But why did God let him wander the earth? Yes, he's wandering around God is giving him time for what? Repentance and faith and confession. That's God's grace and God's mercy. Did God let Cain get away with murder? The answer is no. He's calling him back. Maybe it, it looks like that as Cain walked away. We see that in the next point here. Uh, as we advance into a Genesis, we eventually see that God brought judgment upon the whole earth with the, uh, the flood. Okay. Now, why is it that God goes this route? And that he sell, tells this to uh, Cain, the, the ground isn't going to produce its uh, crop anymore for you. It's going to lower its yields. Uh, you're going to be a vagrant and a wanderer. This is what's going to happen to you. Well, because God is teaching Cain, Adam, and Eve, and the rest of the human beings on the planet, he's teaching us an important lesson. When it comes to what do we do with murderers? What do we do with sinners? God tells us what to do. He's the one who determines what we're going to do with them. 
What are we going to do with these sinners? What are we going to do with sinners? Okay. What do we do with a murderer? Okay. And God says, oh, this is my business too. This is what I'm going to do. I'm the boss in this, in other words. Okay. If we were to leave it to ourselves, if we took God's word, we took God and threw the Bible in the trash and away it went, and there wouldn't be anybody left. Mankind, we'd murder everybody. Take God out of it, there would be nobody left on the earth. There'd be just jackrabbits and Tyrannosaurus rexes and wolves and coyotes and lions, tigers and bears and the rest. Okay? If you take God out of it. Okay? And we've seen examples in human history when God is removed from how to deal with human beings, it's not pretty. When you take God out of it, whether it be my own life, or your life, or a, a nation's life, a government, kings, um, whatever, it's not pretty. It's, it's look out. But when we say, God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this now? Then it's good. You see, God even protects the murderer. God wants to save even the murderer. God wants to save the sinner, okay? So we notice that in our passage here, all right? So the second thing that we notice here, we notice a missing brother. Then we're going to look also <coughs> at a, uh, a marked brother. <coughs> a marked brother. So notice what Cain does. Cain receives this word from the Lord about a reduced crop, a wanderer, or vagrant and wanderer. And Cain says, my punishment is too great to bear. Cain is concerned only about the punishment. He has no concern about what he had just done. Killed his brother. It was not even on his mind. He cares about that. Again, you see the depravity of man. What Cain does, instead of repenting, he complains against God. God, that's not right. Good grief, all I did was kill my brother and you do this to me? See the depravity of man? God tells us he's going to do this for uh, Cain, uh, reduce the yield, vagrant, wanderer, and Cain gets mad at him. Cain gets mad at God. This punishment is too much. It's too much to bear. And he complains against God. Okay? What Cain could have done is he could have, instead of bearing it, give it to God in repentance and faith. Behold, you have driven me from this day from the face of the ground. In your face I will be hidden. And from your face I will be hidden. I will be a vagrant wanderer. Whoever sees me is going to kill me. Now, Cain has extra fear in his life. He's afraid of other people. When they see me, they're going to kill me. And again, he's only concerned about his physical body. He's not taking any care or concern about his soul. And again, we see this depravity, this hardness of heart in mankind. People are going to see me, they're going to kill me. Okay. And so sin now uh, it generates extra fear. Okay. Not only does sin uh, affect how we treat other people, we wanna, we're angry at God, so we take it out on other people, other human beings. But now also sin has separates us. When there's sin in my life, it separates me from my family, from other people, because I'm afraid of them. And we see that's what's happening with Cain here. So the Lord, he said to Cain, therefore whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be seven times on Cain, or on the person who kills you. Okay? So God, again, he's setting these terms. God is the one who's setting terms, setting limits on what to do with murderers. Okay? And again, it's important for us as a society to Use God's word as a foundation. How do we deal with this? Okay. God is protecting him. Okay? 
again, giving him time for repentance and faith, okay? So Cain, notice what he does. Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Okay. So what's happened to Cain? Cain has killed his brother. God has come to him. Uh, where's your brother? I don't know. He's lied to God. He's killed his brother. Uh, he's questioning God. He's saying, God, this is none of your business. Um, the ground is cursed. Uh, he's a vagrant. He's a wanderer. Now he's afraid. He's separated from family. He's got all these things going on. And notice what he does. He leaves the presence of God. Okay. He said, I'm, I'm done with this. Again, not in any way, shape, or form, form cons concerned about his soul. Okay. His lost condition is his own responsibility. He said, I'm just... I'm just leaving. Okay? That's, that's scary. That's awful. That God was so gracious to him, merciful to him, long-suffering with Cain, and he says, and he walks away from the presence of God. Okay? God is 100% responsible for our salvation. Praise God, he's willing to save us, and he, he is able. Okay? Our lost condition, that comes in us. God is standing right there waiting for him, but he walks away. Okay. And that's scary. So as I was thinking about that, I'm glad that you're all still here. Okay. Because it's possible to say, you know, I don't need this. Walk out the door. But I'm glad that Jesus has touched you. You see the condition of mankind. You see the condition of that old nature inside of us. And praise God that he has held you here with his spirit. And the word of God is holding you here because there's also good news in here. There's another man who let his blood spill to the ground. His name is Jesus. He was willing to be beat up he was willing to be scourged and put crown of thorns on for your sake and my sake, for us sinners, for us murderers. Well, you might say, oh, I've never murdered anybody. Don't start either, all right? Okay. Jesus told the people in the book of Matthew, if you hate your brother, if you are angry with him, or if you call them a fool or whatever, you have disregard for your fellow man, you think less of them, Jesus says you're guilty. You see, it's the, the attitude of the heart. So, this is where I am, this is where you are. And God is inviting us to come back to him. Come to me. For it is his shed blood. I was trying to stir this around in my heart and my mind, this week, when Abel's blood hit the ground, God said his blood cried out to me. The earth has said, hey, I should be receiving rain, not human blood. And I've been thinking in my heart and my mind, I wonder what happened the day that Jesus' blood hit the ground. And I've been stirring that around. And I'm not totally sure what the answer is. I know in the book of Isaiah 53, it says that by his stripes we are healed. When his blood hit the ground, we're healed by that. As God disciplined his son, he poured out the sin of the world, my sin upon his son, as Jesus' blood hit the ground, it brings about healing. So Jesus is, when he dies on the cross, He's bringing the sinners. He's bringing the murderers back to himself, inviting them to come to have their sins forgiven. And I was encouraged by that. And so today, as you hear today's message, we as God's people, uh, we are our brother's keeper. The murderers. Da, 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 da. God 
he was so gracious with them, so merciful with them, to invite them to come back to him in repentance and faith. And he's, he wants us to be brothers keepers, okay? to invite people to come back to Christ. And I was encouraged by that. And so today, as you hear today's message, uh, I'm sure it was a challenge to sit there and hear it. It was a challenge to study it, to see, good grief, this is what we've become. You know, I mean, this, we're removed by this at least 5,000, 6,000 years, but we haven't advanced at all. The human heart is the same, and yet God cries out to us. He's, he's longing for us to come back, just like those two brothers who uh, sinned against their father, and the one said, you know, I'm going back home. And the father was waiting with arms wide open, ready to receive him. And so as you hear today's passage, uh, think of that good news that Jesus is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but inviting them to come back, okay? just like he did for Cain here, just like he did for me. Okay? And that's the good news that we have there. Lord, thank you for your word. We look back here in the book of Genesis, and it isn't exactly pleasant to look at it, but we thank you, Lord, that you are willing uh, to step in between Cain and judgment. You can let Cain walk away because someday down the road you would walk to the cross and shed your holy and precious blood. Cain did not get away with murder. You invited him to come back. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for treating us this way. God sent his only begotten Son so that we might not perish. You gave him on the cross that we might have life. Your shed blood covers our sins, and by faith, Lord, we're going to trust in that. Thank you for holding us here today, Lord. Lord, thank you so much that we have been touched in our own hearts and spirits, that we don't walk away, but that we come to you come to you for the gift of salvation, the washing of our sins. Thank you for that good news in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue our service, we're going to go over to our closing hymn. You'll find that in 498. 498.